Welcome to part six of the Big Easter Extravaganza Pink Flying Goose Quilt. Well, I stitched in the ditch like I said I would and then instead of stitching across the ways, which was one thing I was thinking of doing, I then stitched up the middle of each of the geese so that the quilting then on the back, it's far enough apart. There are no crossways quilt pieces. I'm fine with that. Absolutely fine. So I've trimmed the edges back a bit, just a bit, uh, just to neaten it off. And now we're going to do the binding. I've changed my ordinary presser foot on my sewing machine to my walking foot. And uh, <laughs> uh, so the walking foot then, um, is a very useful thing to use when you're sewing through the backing fabric, the wadding, which is quite, well, it's not thick in this case, but it can be quite chunky, and the fr and the, uh, the quilt top. So that's quite a lot of layers to there. And if I was to use just the ordinary presser foot, what can happen is that the whole thing can drag and the top and the bottom can drag along from one another and you can end up with uh, quite an uneven uh, top and bottom going on there. Norma wants to join in but she can't. So what a presser foot is, it's a fantastic piece of kit. The feed dogs which are these little metal things underneath uh, on the bed of the machine which feeds the fabric through, they work from the bottom so they're feeding the bottom fabric through. And what a presser foot's got, it's got its own feed dogs so that it's pressing the fabric through from the top so it sort of feeds it through like this. You're going to have to go up there, sweetheart. So it, it grabs over hold of the fabric and feeds it through evenly. And so a presser foot's a really useful thing. A cat, on the other hand, is not when you're trying to put on a binding. Thank you. Can you sit there? Thank you very much. Oh, I must just address this one because I said something. Oh, Dean, um, who's uh, in Australia, he let, uh, I put a comment about and um, when I start work on this quilt I'll have to chuck the cats out and he said well, that's not very friendly, chucking the cats out and what I really meant was I was going to have to put them in the sitting room. I'll show you a picture of the sitting room. I think they're going to be really happy in there <laughs> just for the time when I'm working on a paler coloured quilt. So, as I say, not sure if this is going to be a good direction to show you what I'm doing here. I've trimmed down the quilt. I'm going to trim it down even more, but that'll do for now. And I'm going to put the quilt, the quilted quilt top, wadding and backing all together. Now, this is where the quilt police are quite possibly going to have my guts for garters because this is how I do a quilt binding. It's how I do a quilt binding. I'm not pretending that this is the only way to do a quilt binding but it's the way that works for me, it's the way I enjoy doing it and this is what I'm going to do. So what I've got here, I made this quilt binding before I put all my fabric away and because this is such a scrappy colourful quilt I, I haven't tried to match colours with colours. I've just took, uh, if you can see here, what I took was uh, a, a patterned bit of fabric, a plain bit of fabric, patterned, plain, of any size. I cut a four inch wide strip like that and pressed it together. Now some people I know cut this seam here on the bias so as to distribute the fabric across the binding. So if anybody wants my address for the quilt police to come and arrest me, that's fine. Do you know how much I care? Not much at all. So then I'm going to show you my way. Like Frank Sinatra, I've done it my way, okay? I'm going <laughs> to... So the, the raw end of the first bit of fabric, I'm just going to fold it under, finger press it like that, fold it back in half so that that is nice and neat. And then I'm actually going to start sewing around about here. Not at the very end, I'm going to leave that bit flapping free. And then 
I'm just going to line this up anywhere along any end of the quilt but in the middle of an end uh, in the middle of a, of a run. So I'm going to line the side of the binding with the edge of the quilt here. I'm going to ignore this completely and I'm just going to stitch. Presser foot's brilliant. Very noisy though. This is going to make for a nice narrow binding which is what I love. Uh, on all my quilts that's what I do. I don't put a border on. Someone asked in the comments was it going to have a border after the end of the flying geese was I going to then put an extra border. No, I like my pattern to go right up to the edge of the quilt and for the binding to be very narrow. It's just my own personal preference. Okay I'm coming up to a corner now and again I'm not sure this is a very good for you to see from but I'm just going to do it anyway. Okay quilt police look away now. Okay I've sewn to within a quarter of an inch of the end and I'm taking the piece out now like so and lining up the next edge that I'm going to sew. I take my quilt binding and then I'm going to fold that up so that this piece here is at absolutely 45 degrees and then turn that down I've got to be careful that I don't squish that in further. Okay, and then I put my needle back. On the quarter inch again, that's folded up so I can't sew on it. And then off I go. And so then if you can see that corner there, when we come to make that corner, that will be like a little mitered corner. I'll show you when, when, I, when I get to that point. <laughs> I sew to within a quarter of an inch of the side. I fold the binding at 45 degrees, exactly 45 degrees upwards like so. Then I fold the binding back down again and stitch away. Now if you remember when we started out I had this little um, pink edge here that I just finger pressed over and I left it I don't know maybe three inches um, unsewn. I lay out the pink so that I can see where that's going to end. I lay this out on top of it and then I'm just going to cut this and then as I come nearer I'm just going to pop that inside there just make sure that everything's nice and even. And then I sew over it. I'm going to hand stitch this down next. That's the next thing I'm going to do. And when I, I start here and I'll just stitch this together here. But there you go. The next thing I need to do now then is I need to sew Ah, it's my favourite part of quilting, my absolute favourite part. I'm going to trim this back then, this edge here. I'm going to turn this over and then this lovely folded edge here. I mean, that's too much bulk there for you to see. I'm going to stitch it down to the back all the way around. It's my favourite part of quilting because for two reasons. I like hand stitching, but it also means we're nearly at the end of the quilt. So that's what I'm going to do next then. I'm going to do some hand stitching and then, then the quilt will be finished. But then there's another couple of things that I like to do before it goes to its final destination. Here's a little look at that mitered corner. Fold the top up, fold it down. You create that lovely mitre there 
And then as you're doing the hand stitching, just hand stitch that all down. Next comes the quilt label. This should say the date it was made and the maker. I'm no embroiderer, but I do love this little Beatles quote. And finally, it's done. I like to make a tie to tie it up with. And then all that gorgeous goodness is off to its new home. Thanks for watching this epic series. The quilt will get a wash before it goes. But that is the final part of this Easter quilt.